around holding. Look, there are runes written along the side. Maybe there's a clue. Oh, That's it. Oh, I see runes. This has been the Black Plague, a game designed for the better part of the last. Well, actually, I'm not sure how long. But something that I've noticed as I've gone back to play older games is that somewhere between the 90s and now, games have gone from letting you ride in the front seat with no seatbelt ready to fly through that window at any time to developers putting you on a leash and walking you through games like their goodest little gim. Play a Ubisoft game now and you'll have three neon signs, two smoke signals, ten HUD elements, and a chemtrail pointing towards every objective so aggressively that even goddamn Ray Charles can see it from the grave. Furthermore, then you'll have games like God of War, where boy won't shut the fuck up, or Horizon Forbidden West, where you mumble to yourself like a schizophrenic. Traversal paths are now splooged all over with yellow paint, and many AAA games are designed like bowling alleys to make sure that you can't wander off in the Walmart, get lost, and start crying to strangers that your neglectful mother let you mosey off while she was comparing wine bottles. And you weren't allowed to do that, because if you did that, you might just become unhappy, and unhappiness leads to not playing the game. Then you might not buy the ten sequels. Take the pill! It's an antipsychotic to deal with Atreus. Look, It'll make you happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. You hear what I'm saying here, pimp? No? That's alright. The point is, this aversion to making the player uncomfortable or making them think because they might think wrong and give up is taking away a major reason for why I play video games. I'm just looking for a fix. A little dime bag of that mental challenge that makes me wonder, how do I get out of this padded room you've put me in so that I can get that biblical flood of that happy, happy joy, joy juices flowing through my brain? Please stop smoothing out the edges. Please give me conflict. Please make me think. Or, and this is where the curveball comes in, just, just my brothers in Christ just turn the game into an all-out shit show of action and you can disregard everything I just said and take my heavenly shekels because at the end of the day, all I'm looking for is fun. Stimulate my mind and nuts by making me think is fun. Carnage is also fun. With that being said, System Shock manages to do both, which is why we're goddamn here. JFJ, you son of a bitch! Thank you for convincing me to buy this. You know what it takes to make a game with classic game design in the year 2023? It takes brass balls. The System Shock remake is 30 hours of one of the most engaging RPGs I've ever played. And not because there were 20 classes to pick from, nor a rainbow of gear ass blasting into my backpack for those 30 hours, but rather because they just put me on a ship and kept giving me wedgies every time I did something wrong. And I did many things wrong. There were no giant arrows guiding me to every objective, nor neon signs, nor smoke signals, nor prepubescent walking spoilers, or even a goddamn quest log. Just a lot of reading, a lot of listening, and a lot of thinking, pimps. Which is why I will issue this declaration right now. This game is not going to be for all of you. Because it is simply unafraid of throwing you into the flames and letting you find the log that tells you where the fire extinguisher is. Or pepper spray your eyes and let you find the milk. Or kick you in the dick and let you find the ice bag. Choose whichever analogy you prefer. It was founded off of forcing you to fail your way to finding each piece of the puzzle, and many times it's only to discover these pieces aren't even from the same set. System Shock is a game built upon what I refer to as classic game design, which I could attempt to give a simple explanation of, but where's the fun in that? You're gonna find out much faster if I just take you into the field. Come with me, pimp! See this right here? Spoiler alert, by the way, pimps, run if you are so inclined. This number will mean nothing to you in the first few hours of the game, but by the final ones, it's the first part of a number sequence that unlocks the pearly gates to the end game. Don't worry, you will not write it down, and you will be traveling through six levels for 30 minutes in the end game to find them all again. Classic game design. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, you're not impressed? One time I walked into a room, grabbed a memo, slapped a button, and nuked 90% of the Earth's population, forcing a game over. Does that tickle your pages? One time I walked up to a Roomba only to have it turn on me and go, I will kill you. And another time I walked into the whole fucking hive nest and had a thousand of them go, does that do it for you? Classic game design. Throw a grenade and the door shuts. 
classic game design. Shoot a plasma disc shooter and have it bounce all around the room before thunking me right in the brow. Classic game design. Walk into the floor spawner and it takes you to the robo sex dungeon dimension. Classic game design. Walk into a high radiation area before you need to and keep dying over and over again until you realize this might just be somewhere that you shouldn't be right now. Classic game design. Need to get into this bunker to get the final input for that pearly gate I told you about earlier. Looks like a retinal scan unlocks it. Logically, what unlocks a retinal lock? Retinas. So go scour through this entire level for a loose head that does not have a fucking freckle different from the other heads. And wham, bam, this is the linchpin to the entire end game. I guess about 10% of people make it past this, pimps. Classic game design. Anyways, you get the goddamn point. This game wants you to die in the pursuit of accomplishing the main story because that's how they get you addicted to the pain this game provides. I'm so glad that Dark Souls could inspire their gameplay loop. And speaking of which, hell, I didn't even get all the weapons. I couldn't even find where the hell the grenade launcher was and you bet your bottom bitch there wasn't even a gust of wind that blew me in the right direction. Classic game design, pimps. I love it! And I can't move on without saying there's a part to this game where you have to beat this chess puzzle here and sure, is it set up for a two-move win? Of course. But who gives a shit? I purposely died and played the full board like a man, uh-huh! And then I sat here for two hours painstakingly save scumming as I tried every last maneuver against the AI menace and when I won, it was like I just drove by by Krispy Kreme when the light was on. Damn near divine recompense, pimps. And you think I used a single auto solver probe on any hacking puzzle either? Hell no. Now were they level three puzzles? No. But as long as I have you here, let me tell you about the rabbits, Lenny. The combat in this game is solid. I won't say it's below average nor above, just solid. Melee does feel pretty awful and impactless, but once you zap a head off for the first time, you feel where all the love went. The firearms, God. Bless. Now, although I am salty that the assault rifle model isn't a stockless AK as advertised in the original, they do make up for it by the sheer variety of lead and laser shooters provided. And I'll just cut to the quick. My two favorite guns are the shotgun and the magnum because these things blast through surfaces harder than the Kool-Aid man. Additionally, they shake my balls and rattle my teeth in just the right way. <laughs> and an honorable mention to the drum mag variant of the SMG. Now to shift topics for a second, System Shock may be a neglectful mother, but it is still the creator of many things. And I'm not talking about the Imsim genre, I'm talking about leaning, bitch! Lean! That's all I had to say. And another thing, the gore in this game is fantastic. Somehow my heavy pistol can cut people in half? It was when I saw this shit right here that I knew I was going to recommend this game. Now to rattle off some of my gripes, I was gonna whinge on about the gamer glow being too strong on the puzzles, but upon looking through the footage again, the ruling on the field is that I was just being a little bitch. Next, the Cyber Realm is a step above Watch Dogs in that at least you have to do something in this game, but you're not exactly cracking the cryptex either. Either. It's just kind of meh to me, you know? But you know what's not meh? You know what does piss me off? The final boss. After an entire game of getting kicked in the cock and balls, relentlessly solving problems, and spending countless hours making it through the game's trials, it's almost like the big punchline to this giant joke is how bad and easy the final boss is. Just so you know where my headspace was at going into the final boss fight, my headcanon was that I'm the opposite of Ryan Gosling from Blade Runner 2, and that I'm here to free mankind of the sentient VTuber, not fuck it! So I went full out, commando gearing myself up to the gills for that final encounter. I saved up all my railgun ammo, 14 prox mines, all the plasma discs, hundreds of rounds of regular ammunition. Boy, I was ready. I was raring to be let at that bitch. Only to discover that the final boss doesn't let you have any access to your inventory, and you are shooting an awful pea shooter at her simps in the Matrix realm, and she is just a giant tornado that you shoot golf balls at. Catfished again, pimps! And would you look at that, there aren't even any stakes either because they put infinite respawns into this final boss boss fight. It's like they uploaded the first draft of the prototype instead of the final goddamn version. This is the worst boss fight I think I may have seen in any game ever. I regret being a member of the 5%. Let me see if I can backtrack my way to a I good end. I will kill you, GI! <laughs> Many thanks to the flock of pimps for fun in this video, and a huge thanks to all the pipperers. You guys bought me the time to drop 30 hours backtracking through this game, so I appreciate you. Alright, bye pimps.